Ten, nine years ago, I got my first iBot. My life drastically changed. I'm a father of two, I'm a business owner, and I work for the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. I'm out there all the time. There are 1.26 million spinal cord injury patients living in our country, and 5.6 million people living with some sort of paralysis. This chair has changed my life. I know Eddie and Craig and Gary and everybody else that lives in these chairs. We know how safe and effective these chairs really are. I travel around this country. I don't think about where I have to go being in a wheelchair climbing chair. I was in New York City last week. I have to, if I had to navigate the city the way that the curbs are cut out, I would probably put an extra two miles onto my push everywhere I would have to go. I live freely in South Florida. I go everywhere and I don't have to think about it. I go to places and I go off of curbs all day long. I have never ever had a problem. Unlike some of the other individuals that were here, I live in this chair. I have just calculated 78,000 hours that I have lived in my iBot. I remember that feeling when I was lying on the beach when I first broke my neck and I was paralyzed. And when they stopped manufacturing these chairs and I knew that that March date is coming up where there'll be no more service, I don't want to be paralyzed again. That's not what I want. Our Americans, as Americans, we should give people the freedom and the mobility that they have that's available. We should not take technology and allow it to be put on a shelf somewhere to allow people like me to live a tougher life. It's not easy to begin with, and we're trying to make life easier on people. So being a father and going over to other people's homes with my children and not having to call ahead and be like, do I need my ramps? Can I get in? It's not a question anymore. I go, I live, I am me. This chair allows me to be me. Mobility devices like this, they are safe and effective. I've had no problems with my chairs. They really do change an individual's life and perspective of how we go through our everyday routine. I see all the time when I'm with other individuals in chairs, they say to me, where can I get that? I wanna do what you do. Why do you get to do that and I can't? It needs to be reclassified. So individuals like me, can live a better quality of life, which you brought up earlier. It's important that we have a quality of life. Will a cure happen? Someday. We never know. It will be something that will happen. But until then, let us live. Let us enjoy life with what is out there. The technology that I am sitting in is my legs. Imagine you guys waking up and not grabbing your PDAs anymore. That's what it would be like to me, waking up and looking next to me and going, I don't have a stair climbing wheelchair anymore. It's that real. This is life changing. I remember the first time I got in the chair, I really couldn't believe that I was a quadriplegic anymore. It didn't feel like it. And knowing that that March date is looming is pretty heavy. It brings tears to my eyes. It, it's not fair that I should have to really think about it after 25 years of sitting. And I know that the technology that we have can be better, will be better, but we need the reclassification to be done so more individuals like me can live a better quality of life. And I hope that you all can see the human aspect of what this is all about. I understand that there's a lot that goes on when it comes to medical devices, I've been living this world for 25 years. But I don't want to take a step backwards. I'm trying to take a step forward. And I feel at this point in time that it is crucial as a panel that you guys really look at the whole picture. Understanding the technology, understanding the quality of life, understanding what it's like to be a businessman, a father, a tax-paying citizen. That's what this chair allows me to do. I did not live the way I did when I lived in a regular power chair, I had limitations. There's no holding me back now. I'm on the road all the time. I'm out there speaking to people about how to go forward. But in the back of my mind, I know that this might go away someday, and I cannot let that happen. So I hope that you all consider in what we've been listening to all day and where we're going with this is to please allow my community of 5.6 million Americans and 1.25 million people living with spinal cord injuries to have a better quality of life with 
mobility systems like this that are safe and effective. It's my life, it's my legs, it's my world. Thank you for giving me the time, the opportunity. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Brown. I appreciate your, your testimony. All right, uh, there's no questions at this point. Uh, any Anyone in the audience uh, wish to address the panel at this point? And, and does the, the panel have any questions, issues with the open uh, public hearing speakers? Yes, Dr. Gilbert. I, I'm trying to understand this a little bit, and I, I'm having a hard time. Um, so the connection between the chair no longer being serviced, or I understand it's not being marketed now, but that the servicing is going to end, and that link to the classification of the chair is